already. Are you guys horny for history? <laughs> and that sounds like the best way to start out our returning episode. Welcome back. Hello. All. Welcome back. To Marmalade Talk. To uh, Marmalade. Damn, it's it's been a while. Nah, nah, nah. Jeff and I were joking around that we should pretend no time has passed at all. What do you mean? It's still just, it's, just acknowledge nothing. It's it's November 2019. The, I have the weirdest sense that something strange is going to occur in about six months. So we should all take care not to get sick. Uh, oh yeah. Hi everyone. Hello. Hey. And welcome to Tudor. I, I hardly, hardly know, know her. her. Oh, oh man, my. it's been a while since we've said that. I gave shivers. I'm spine. not. I'm just really happy. Might yeah. be the wine. Might be the company. It, or it just could be just the amount of positiveness we got from our listeners when we talked about coming <laughs> back. Like, oh my god, seriously, people. I don't, I don't think you realize how much that like made like myself, Emily, and Garrett stay. Just we seeing. were all so thrilled. Oh, just I, just the outpouring of comments saying like, "Oh my God, yes, please come back," or <laughs> "Oh, you guys got us through such hard times," or you know, I used to listen to you guys all the time, and I just can't wait to hear you guys again. Just all of that just felt so good. It really did. We're glad we, we, this whole thing is is just a friendly, fun thing for us, and so we're. So happy that it's a friendly, fun thing for you guys, too. But I will say the thing that's really making me happy, yes, our listeners are wonderful. Yes, I love talking to you guys again. But it is the fact that we are a top three Catholic podcast, guys. Yeah, we did it. (laughs) We broke the papal ceiling. So what's the context behind this? Like, like, so what's going on? We've still had our account set up for years, right? The entire time we were on our hiatus, we still had all of our accounts. So I would occasionally get messages on Facebook, emails. Most of it was very transactional, just saying, you know, your Libsyn account is still going. But the other day, earlier this week, I got an email from uh, Good Pods, which is just another syndication platform, I believe. And it wanted to inform me that we, Tudor, I hardly know her, are, I want to pull up, I want to read it verbatim because I will butcher it otherwise. We are the number three in top 100 Catholicism monthly. (laughs) (laughs) The best part. Number one is the Bible in a year with Father Mike Schmitz. Number two is Life is Worth Living, a Fulton J. Sheen Catholic podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the number three Catholic podcast. Yes. They didn't realize that we haven't recorded (laughs) since 2019. I don't know. I have no clue what they... I can't even figure out what they saw in our podcast because when we create the podcast, we set up the things that we want to be essentially tagged as. So I put things like comedy, history, pop culture... Trust me, there was nothing religious that I put in there. Um, my only I guess feel like we got to start now. We had an episode. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had start, an episode. Well, Emily's the... drinking wine. We can get some crackers out. Uh, Garrett's brother can get us those crackers. All right, hook us up. That's true. Um, my only guess is that we had an episode about the popes and some internet like scouring resulted in that and we do have a high listenership still which guys thank you was it the pope's exorcist what no 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 not that that movie was so bad (laughs) uh no it was not the pope's exorcist but we had the the papal episode all about the popes so um i'm very sorry for number four because it was another really like (laughs) the bible with father blee blee blue blue blah and i just like I know he's Catholic, he's a priest, but he's probably got a little rage that he's being beaten out by Tudor. I hardly know Well, her. unknown to our listeners, that Garrett is now an ordained priest. Oh, yes. he's uh, This is a Catholic podcast now, so... Fa- Father mm-hmm. Garrett. <laughs> Bless you, my child. I want to know, I, I want to I believe that... The people we beat out, like Father Father Schmitty or whatever, he's he's like, ah, oh, yes, this tutor, I hardly know her. Let me listen to the pod go. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Father. Oh, good Lord. Bless these heretics. Um, Do we have an episode about somebody getting fucked out of a window? 
Was that most of them? Yes. Oh my god, we did. I do remember. Uh, that I think it happened in. A, if I'm remembering correctly, it was in an episode of Rain. I think it was the episode where we were bashing Rain. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Um, I truthfully had to re-listen to some of our episodes, guys. I forgot Rain was a show, by the way. I did. How big that was <laughs> for us when it was. I don't. Recording. Uh. So there's so much to catch up on. So it's been five years since we last did an episode. Roughly four and a half, because our what? last episode was released on Halloween mm-hmm. 2019. Who thought um, the scariest thing would be us going on hiatus? <laughs> um, well, I think we owe our listeners, our friends, a little bit of a life update on all of us. So... Uh, Emily divorced me and now I'm married to Garrett. <laughs> Because <laughs> we really want to confuse everyone who always That's couldn't really that why out. it took five years for us to come back on air. It was well, just now we're like a of... thruple. Yeah, it's Garrett, pretty Garrett sweet. Lives with us. Yeah, it's all mutual. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. No, we seriously. got a lot of love to give. <laughs> no, seriously, no. And we are still happily together. Very happily together. We celebrated ten years of marriage this year. Holy shit! It'll be eleven in July. Eleven in July. Um. Holy shit! Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got married as the youngins, and our daughter is when, when we stopped our last episode she was only like what like 10 months old yeah so she you guys were with us through the infertility and through the finally having a baby so she's now five hilarious to she's go a to weirdo kindergarten. and she is now also an older sister because we have a little boy we have a new little man he's here. he's his, not that new he's his gonna be name two. Is not henry it's, sorry it was, it was at, so close was to being close henry it was really be close really? it yes. was so the thing was we always like the name Henry. For Emily, it was an obvious Henry the Eighth. For me, whenever I had to name a kid, I wanted a nerdy reference. So if we did Henry, it was Henry Jones Jr. Because I my favorite yes. movie of all time is Indiana Jones. But we decided not to, mainly because whenever I would suggest that to people, they would always ask me if we would call him Hank, and I fucking hate that name. I'm really sorry if your name's Hank. I it, I hate it. I hate it. All I can think of is Venture Brothers. <laughs> oh, God, I, my, so, my first thought, thought with Hank uh, is Hank Williams, like the country singer. Yeah, so it's not Henry. Or Hank Hill. But oh, we do yeah. have a wonderful little boy. Um, he is just as silly and loving and wonderful and so fucking sweet. Our daughter grew up to be me. Yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> um, we, honestly, beyond that, there's not really been a ton of major life updates that affect I, the podcast. I mean, during pandemic, I went back to school. You did. I went to school. So now I actually work at a nice full-time remote job from home and everything. So Yeah, like, he was a stay-at-home dad last time you guys were listening. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, still stay home with her daughter mm-hmm. when we were recording last. And so, yeah, lots, lots of major life changes since then. And then during pandemic. Garrett stuff. has, too, had some life changes. Yeah, yeah. Um, we finally fixed the uh, the smoke detector. So <laughs> no, I, I don't live there post. anymore. I I um I I'm I'm happily taken, not married, but I am taken. I found a I found a wonderful young lady to to put up with my shit. Please don't call and her we a have young a lady gor- because that just sounds weird. Yeah. Okay. She's a, an a amazing be- human. <laughs> Amazing, age-appropriate woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have a <laughs> we have a lovely dog together and two mm-hmm. cats. And I'm also going back to school now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh wait. Pursuing higher education. You also. I am so proud of Garrett for this. He has not had a cigarette in what was it like five years now? Six years. Six years. So round of applause for Garrett. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I listened to a, a, one of our our like last episodes, and I think in there we talked about Garrett has not had a cigarette for like six weeks. Oh my god! That that was really you got to celebrate all the milestones. We yeah. do, no matter how small. We do. So, um, but now that our lives have, uh, we've kind of like passed a curve of chaos. Yes. Um, we're in a better place to dedicate time and resources and energy to this fun subject and each other and our listeners. So we're happy to be back. Cause we always, we, we still like, even when the show, we went on hiatus, we still always check up on things. Like we occasionally go on Facebook. We saw that there were we had new listeners since we left. Yeah. And that was crazy. Like, like I think we had, I, I had an email 
from someone from like 2022 in response to one of our Halloween episodes. Uh, shout out to Olivia because that's, that's who it's from. So thank you, Olivia, for sending us that email. I think it's one of the spooky stories. Sorry, I don't have it up right now. I'll read no. it next episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll read it out, out one of her scary stories she talks about. But yeah, so we've always kind of been there, still like kind of case to check on stuff. I know people would message us on Facebook. I know mm-hmm. Emily or Gary would always mm-hmm. be very good on responding mm-hmm. to you guys. And we appreciate, like, I know, like, every couple of months we always get someone posting on to us, like, when are you guys going to come back? We miss you. We want you to, like, and trust us, we've missed you guys so much. Like, that was, what, that was honestly what we missed a lot in our time was hearing from you guys, the yeah. fans and everything. Mostly because it was crazy for us to think we had fans. Y'all are weird. Love ya, <laughs> but... Boy, although, like I said, we were re-listening to episodes, and I actually started laughing at our old episodes because, god damn, we are funny. <laughs> Except, according to our daughter, we're not. It's funny now having a little routine. He's like, <laughs> who's getting upset? We we're actually you listen to yourself. Giving me shit yesterday because I was listening to the episode while I was making dinner, and she's trying to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and she goes, "Mom, why are you listening to yourself?" I'm like, "Jesus, kid." All I can think about the, the last two days was I've listened to old episodes. Was the Donald Glover bit of like you listen to your own music? Um, the pop culture references will continue, and now they're added because Jeff Jeff and I have both partaken in Shit's Creek. So boy, oh boy, get ready! <laughs> uh, lots of new girl TikTok is a thing now. Oh my god, yeah. So yeah, you posted a TikTok, didn't you? I did. I just. <laughs> Look, so I'm rewatching the Tudors. This is all my little brother's fault, by the way. The reason we're doing this podcast again, it's because um, my little brother was over for dinner. He's he's not a little brother. He's in his mid twenties. He's an adult, but he's still my little brother. And he and I were just shooting the shit. And he goes, "Oh, I've always wanted to watch that show, The Tudors." And I'm like, "Oh, I love it." And um, he asked a very innocuous question, like, why did Henry VIII have so many wives? And I (laughs) was like, well, because he really needed a son. But it really goes back to the marriage to Catherine of Aragon. But actually, it goes back to his father. But actually, it goes back to the Wars of the Roses. So then I spent 45 minutes teaching him about the Wars of the Roses (laughs) and Henry VIII's marriages. And um, it's like asking Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's like, was Interstellar a good movie? (laughs) So then I started rewatching the Tudors and I watched a funny episode. Um, it wasn't a funny episode. They're not funny, but I watched an episode that just reminded me of a TikTok meme I'd been seeing. So I had to, it was in my brain for the last two weeks. So I put it out there. So if you want, our TikTok is just Tudor dot I dot hardly dot no dot her or something like just fucking get on tiktok and look for tutor we're, we're trying to we're know. gonna try to branch we'll out post with social on media. social look guys i have no fucking clue what i'm doing on tiktok i use it to consume and laugh and make fun of shit and find recommendations for smut well, so. that's the point for things like yeah for me it's is like i don't have social media myself personally yeah i think i have an instagram account and i barely use that and it's is like i'd use more of it for just viewing stuff than i ever do actually interacting with other people so it's funny now, like with the podcast, mm-hmm. I've been going in trying to figure out, like, what can we create? Like, oh, I guess we can make an Instagram account. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess we should also update our Twitter. Oh, I guess I can also do a YouTube mm-hmm. channel, that kind of stuff. It's just funny like having to go through all this stuff and not knowing how they work. I, I feel like old I man. I was literally Googling how to TikTok. How to social media. Yeah, I have never felt so geriatric we, in my life. We just feel like all these guys in like Congress asking questions <laughs> about TikTok. <laughs> I, look, I know it's hilarious that I created a TikTok when in like a month it's not going to be allowed in the country anymore, but I'll I'll use it while I can. Strike while the iron's hot, Emily. Exactly. Um so we're we're back, baby. We're excited to be back. Like Futurama, you can't get rid of us. Yeah, it's never ogre. Let me tell you guys. Part of the reason I had to listen to our old episodes was because I don't remember half the shit we talked about. So earlier this week when we decided to keep going, I was coming up with a list of ideas and I was like, oh, I should do an episode all about Will Summers because like he was Henry VIII's fool and that's a really cool concept to like have a fool and he lived, he survived. I would love Henry. that episode. We did an episode about Will Summers. God damn it. <laughs> so I like, I had like half a dozen ideas and then I had to get rid of a bunch of them because we'd already done those episodes. So, um, 
Today's See, a re- I, I thought that it'd be good if we just completely reboot it, start from the beginning, actually, but like go a little bit faster. Actually, we do think we're going to revisit some topics. No, this because... is the rebooted tar- hardly. Tudor, I hardly know her. This is the rebooted one. This is like the dark and gritty Nolan verse now. <laughs> where this ad- Everybody has to Welcome to like Tudor, this. I hardly know her. We're trying to create our own little podcast universe right now. <laughs> Uh, this is what's the TCU? His butt. Jason Momoa pops out and he goes, "My man." <laughs> um, <laughs> He's so, uh, Charles Brandon. <laughs> no, no, no. Henry Cavill is still Charles Brandon. It's still the DCEU. It works. <laughs> um, now, Henry Cavill gets promoted to be Henry the Eighth. Is that a promotion? Ooh. Um. So. Oh my God! I just completely lost my train of thought. DC. You were you were thinking of oh, podcast ideas. We were thinking of re- of revisiting some episodes because one, it's been so long, and I have read more Tudor books and gotten a different perspective and learned some new things. And historians are continuing to change um, how people think about some of these people. Um, their new theories. And about... I forgot everything. Yes. And I actually did think that you and Jeff would forget a lot. Jeff less so because he's still exposed to me on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, because every but... time I'm about to go to sleep, she has to go tell me something. Yeah. Um, but I did think it'd be fun to start out with a... It's not It's not a quiz because I didn't write down questions. But I do have a couple of questions because I want to gauge how much you guys remember. I still remember Henry's mother's name. What was it? Elizabeth York. All right. Well, you had a one in four shot of getting that right. There were only four women's names. <laughs> well, <laughs> because I remember when we did our trivia episode where you were, where we did the trivia with Garrett and I, that was the final question, and I got that one right. It always stuck with me. Oh, good for you, Jeff. <laughs> Wear that with pride. Um, but I was thinking we could do a quick, uh, I could just shoot you some questions, and Garrett and Jeff, if you remember, that's great. And if you don't, then I guess we know which episodes to revisit. <laughs> Right? Yeah, let's shake the rust off. Let's let's do it. All right. First question. <clears throat> How many Tudor monarchs were there? You can think and name them. I'm going to say six. Name them. Henry, Arthur, Henry. Because it's... Cor- I, his coronated dad, monarchs. What? Coronated monarchs. Oh, coronated? Yeah, you're not a monarch if you're if you don't go through the coronation. Oh, uh, okay. So then it is Henry Seventh, Henry Eighth. Mm-hmm. Then um uh, his son Edward. Mm-hmm. Then Mary. Mm-hmm. Then Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. And she died, and then there was no more. Yes. Uh bonus point, who was a pseudo monarch of the Tudor reign? This one's tricky. You might completely forget it. We talked about it during King Napped. Oh, crap. It's okay. Like a general, even a general guess I'll take. If you have no clue, that's fine. Garrett, any any ideas? George. <laughs> Just go to sleep. <laughs> I was going to say a George there as well, um, actually. No. Or it's either George. See, it's Richard, not dumb, Emily. Nope. It was Jane Grey, the Nine Days Queen. Oh. Mm. I don't remember any of these names. That's totally fine. Bro, like I said, there are four women. Elizabeth, Jane, Mary, and Anne. <laughs> um, and Catherine. Yes. Okay, they five has, names. It's there just actually a, baby, a, a girl was born. They just had a spinning wheel. Yeah. They just go through. <laughs> yes. Um. Okay, so you got the monarchs. Uh, name Henry VIII's wives. Ooh, ooh, I can probably do this. Do it, Gare. I, I want to hear Garrett do it. I'm going to embarrass myself. Uh, Catherine. Uh, bonus points for their full name. Full name. Catherine of Aragorn. Name. Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone with you to the very fires of Mordor. <laughs> no. Catherine of Aragorn. <laughs> Catherine of Aragorn. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, Catherine of dragon? Aragorn is this beautiful image now. <laughs> Now I'm just visualizing um, like Ar- Aragon the dragon in a dress. <laughs> well, Aragon was not the dragon. He was the. I never read the books. The books are really good, honestly. All right, anyway. Catherine of Aragon. Oh God, I should know this one. Oh my God, that's, that's oh like... Garrett, come on. See, the problem is I had to know some of these, or else I don't get any. What's our What's our rhyme? 
Divorce, beheaded, died. Divorce, beheaded, survived. Goodbye. Um, hmm. Oh, shit. Um, How many names? The, the, Anne Boleyn. Woo-hoo. There you go. Good mm. job. Next. And then this is Jane. Yes. And it, I'll, I'll give you a... Plain Jane. <laughs> Accurate, yes. Go ahead. You can... It was Jane Seymour. That's... Jane Seymour, okay. Uh, who was next? Um, shit, this is where I get stuff. Yep. Um... I know. I think I remember this one. I know it. Angela, <laughs> close. <laughs> you don't. You just keep the first syllable. Anne. Anne. Of... What? Anne of Cleves. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Ooh. Next. Ooh, this feels good. Um, <laughs> and then there's. Uh, give me a clue. Is there not a repeated name? It's a repeated name. I'm going to take more time because I know all the listeners are just shouting at their at their <laughs> phones right now saying, it's this, you idiot! <laughs> Fucking dumbass. Catherine. Yes, but Catherine what? This is the oh, one I can't... I don't, I, I don't remember the last... I remember the last name. What is it? I, I, no, I remember the last wife's oh, name. Oh, okay. I can't remember the... I can't remember Catherine this. Howard. That's right. Cause this, Catherine Howard, this was the, of course. This was the young, I knew the that. young ditzy... Dumb. She wasn't ditzy. She was just uneducated, which is very normal for women of that so time ditzy. period. No. <laughs> we don't know. There's a really good book I read called um, Young and Damned and Fair, and it gives a really interesting insight into Catherine Howard. Look, at, look that's another episode. All right. After Catherine Howard, who was there? I know the last one. Tell me. Was... Yeah, you do it, Jeff. Catherine Parr. Ma- yeah. Because okay. Parr you... for the course. Cool. <laughs> I just remember because our episode name. Huh. Um, all right, that's our next question. What are some of our episode titles? Kingnapped, obviously. Duh. Kingnapped, or the classic, or or Tutors in Space. Good job. <laughs> what else is there? Uh, uh, the last episode was called Booed or I hardly <laughs> knew her. Because <laughs> I'm hilarious. We're all hilarious. Uh, Ships and giggles. That's a good one. That was a really, I like that title. Yep. Um, yeah, Par for the Course was that one. Uh, Here Today, Aragon Tomorrow. That was a good one. Oh, man. Uh, Henry, the, the very first episode, Henry VIII, the late, a lady killer. Yeah. Uh, oh, interrupting question. What was our nickname for Henry? Henry the Bathe. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> All right. Okay, now now I'm just looking looking back at old uh, titles, and yeah, this is good. This is good stuff. Yeah, everything is Islam. <laughs> That's amore. <laughs> we had some good shit, man. The Spanish princess has a siesta fiesta. <laughs> um, I never finished that show. <laughs> Anne Boleyn dead and loving it. <laughs> she was not. All right, guys, last. And since Garrett's looking at episodes, he'll get this too. And since Jeff did too, name five people alive during the reign of any of the tutors that we have not mentioned so far. Thomas Cromwell. Good job. Uh, Mary Queen of Scots. Good one. Uh, who was the gossip? Wal- Walsey. Good. Okay. Sam Neil. Who was the big gossip? Um, I'm out of my element here. I remembered one of these. The god. Spanish ambassador. Oh my god, I can't remember the name at all. Chapui. <laughs> Chapui. <laughs> we called him Chapupi. Oh, Bessie Blount. <gasps> yes. Bastard by Bessie Blount. Bastard by Bessie Blount. See, this is now the episode where a bunch of people goes, he said the thing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is like maybe like annoying like marvel shit we're like it's just full of easter eggs of our previous recordings this whole episode is just easter eggs all right um so to our listeners and because garrett and jeff have shown me that they've retained well garrett nothing and jeff (laughs) a surprising amount uh i would like to revisit some of our topics so to our listeners which ones would you like us to redo just let us know and we're probably going to do it and honestly any ideas you would like us to cover in general. Yeah. Because we're, yeah, we're thinking of either 
revisiting stuff that we it's been a while since we did it just because like emily said she's read more books she has a more different perspective on things and also then garrett and i just don't remember anything and there are so many more jokes we can make now yes exactly and then also if you guys have ideas of new stuff like things we might have not covered or things you like to hear us talk about that Mm -hmm. maybe we didn't even think about Mm -hmm. i will say we've even talked about sorry go ahead no 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 you go I was going to say, we've also talked about, you know, moving outside of, you know, strictly tutor knowledge to yep. like things beforehand and afterhand and just yep. just other events in, in English history or relevant well, history that yeah. we could cover. As hard as it was to think of some topics, I do have a handful of them and I think of more every every day. But I'm really fucking excited about this episode and I'm genuinely shocked we never got to this guy in our first go around one it's weird because i i see his name in everything i read but it's never uh at the same level of importance as like wolsey or more or cromwell but it's present and two the name is just fucking amazing so guys today we are talking about the og Richie Rich. That's not his name. 100% his name. Not Macaulay Culkin. He was busy. Um, Richard Rich. This man's Christian name was Richard Rich. Dick Dick. (laughs) (laughs) So are you ready? Yeah, let's talk Dick. All right. This guy is fucking bonkers. Absolutely fucking insane. Um, and we're going to have so much fun discussion. So, uh, first, he was born in 1496. So, still in the reign of Henry the Seventh. And I will spoil it right now. He lived through Elizabeth I. That's shocking for anyone in right. the Tudor era. We had a joke last time. Only I only know this. Um, I survived the Tudors and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. We can <laughs> add his name to that list. I it's always like, start... It's like that wall of like... The, like we remember those we lost during our time except <laughs> they're like there's too many it's, it's it's easier to do a wall of those who survived yes i'm thinking it's like a wall at like one of those burger eating places where it's like you eat the big ass burger you get your face on the wall You're the big and ugly <laughs> they have one bugs. of those at hampton court did you guys not know that there's a if <laughs> if you survived one monarch you get a, a postage size picture if you survive two monarchs you get it a little bigger if you survive all of them there's a cardboard cutout Richard Rich is right up there. (laughs) Okay. So I started with Wikipedia and it was funny because I started writing all of this information down. And then I went and looked at another source and there was even more information. So this is, it's so much. And it, it seems like people want to leave out certain elements of his, I don't know, fucking life, I guess. Um, but I've got as much as I was able to find on the first page of Google results. Um, <laughs> I, did not go, I do not have a book I read in two days. Sorry. Remember, people, we are not professional historians. No. So get those complaints out now. Look, I am just your friend. Yeah, let's put that warning at the beginning of every episode, by the way. I am just your friend who likes... Warning, the following episode is not real. <laughs> I'm just your friend who likes history and forces her husband and best friend to listen. Which one's which, though? You'll never know. All right. So, Richard Rich was born in 1496, so he survived all the Tudors. And um, most sources say his father was another Richard Rich and a woman named Joan. But it also might be a man named John Rich and his wife, Agnes. It doesn't really matter. I thought you were going to say he had two dads. My uh, (laughs) After all, Richard Rich has two dads. Um, not much is known of his early life. He probably studied at Cambridge, but we start hearing more about him in 1516. So this was shortly after Henry VIII came to the throne and he was married to Catherine of Aragon. So he's 20 at this point? About 20, yes. Um, now just so you know, the born in 1496, that comes between, or that comes about because some ambassador wrote in like 1547 that he was 
that Richard was like 50 whatever or more. It literally says he's 56 or more. So they say he was born in 1496 or a little earlier. I wish I could put that in my profile. <laughs> I'm Jeffrey. No. I'm, th- I'm, I'm 35 or more. You need to put that we're a top three Catholic podcaster. Um, <laughs> I am officially a Catholic podcaster now. My mom would be so proud. So he, in 1516, he became a lawyer and he, all of the, the sites I was researching him on they said he entered middle temple quotes there for those who quotes can't because see it literally podcast. says middle temple <laughs> and i couldn't figure out what the fuck middle temple was um i think it's like the bar association of the 1500s i don't i really don't know because it's not clear i think it might be an english thing hmm. um we should find the british guy oh that's another life update the british guy he is now our brother-in-law. He's finally married to Jeff's sister. Yeah. They just got back from England, yeah. actually. My sister got to go, which, got which, to England for the first time ever. I have a really fucking funny story. Interrupting Cal. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Okay. Is, is this Middle Temple? I, I just wikipedia it. I don't know. The Honorable Society of the Middle Temple, commonly known simply as Middle Temple, is one of the four inns of court entitled to call their members to the English bar yes. as barristers. Yes. That is it. Thank you, Gerber. Uh, yeah, honestly, no looks like it started in the 1300s, right? Early 12th and 13th okay. century. Oh wow. Um, my notes are full of post-its because I would find out more and more information as I was writing this, so I couldn't go super deep into some of this stuff. But okay, I do have an interrupting cow story to share with you guys. It's related to my brother-in-law and sister-in-law going to England. So. My sister-in-law texted me. She goes, oh, we're going to Anne Boleyn's castle. And I'm like, oh, my God, you're going to Heaver? And she goes, it's Beaver. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold the fucking phone. I know I I can't pronounce Lester correctly, but I know 100% it is not Beaver. And she goes, well, that's what Dan says it is. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Dan's an idiot. So then we were with Dan, and Dan was like, it's Beaver Castle. And I'm like, no. Bro, it's not. I don't know a ton, but I am 1 billion percent sure it is Heaver with an H. And he goes, it does. It's not spelled like Beaver. And I'm like, yeah, it's not pronounced like Beaver. OK, he thought Anne Boleyn lived in a castle that is pronounced Beaver, but it's spelled Belvoir, the French word B-E-L-V-O-I-R. So he was convinced that Anne Boleyn lived at a completely different castle. Maybe she did live at Belvoir for Beaver. Sorry, it is actually Beaver Castle. <laughs> Fucking English. Like I want to go to there. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway, I had to tell you guys there's a castle in England called Beaver, and it's spelled Belvoir. French Belvoir. Um Anne Boleyn may or may not have lived there. It doesn't really matter, but it's not Heaver Castle. Middle Temple. Now we know what that is. Thanks to Garrett. Thank you, boo. So uh, in 1516, he became a lawyer and entered Middle Temple. And he met Thomas More. Now, (laughs) my favorite thing is one of the sites that I was looking on said that he, quote unquote, formed an alliance with Thomas More. I have no clue what the fuck that meant. (laughs) Because it didn't go into what that meant. It just said they formed an alliance. Um, now you They're just solid bros. They were 100% not because Richie Rich was a dick. <laughs> like, no pun intended to the name. Oh, no. Total pun. His dad must have known. He goes, you're such a dick. You need that name twice. My son, you will grow up to be a dick. Almost as bad. They formed an alliance. And I, I think it means they just worked together. Um, so in Middle Temple from 1519 to 1520, he worked as a butler, which is very fascinating. Maybe there was a, what does a butler do? A butler, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm just, all the way, I was, it's weird to think of someone being a butler back then. Cause I'm, I used to like, oh, the servants, not, I have a butler. Right, right. Um, I, I, I think of, you know. Alfred. <laughs> uh, I think of Butler's I think of Downton Abbey. Or Clue, yeah. Right. Um, now, maybe it had a different meaning. I don't know. But it said he worked as a butler from 1519 to 1520. 
And then the following five years, he became a reader at the New Inn. And that was, Garrett kind of mentioned that when he gave us the definition of the Middle Temple. It was a group of buildings used as offices for lawyers. So he was a reader there. Again, I don't really know what that means. I didn't care to look into it because that's not what this episode is about. Um, and then in 1528, he wrote to Woolsey. You guys all remember Woolsey, right? Our favorite Sam Neill. Yeah. So he wrote to Woolsey suggesting um, some reform of the common law. And um, I think he even asked Woolsey to become his patron. I don't really know if he ended up doing it, but he did at some point have a connection to Woolsey. And What does that mean to become a patron for somebody? I think that would mean that... I think it means Woolsey would have paid for like any additional education, would have mentored him... And um, Wolsey had a ton of political power at this point. So it would have been really beneficial for Wolsey to, to be his patron. Um, okay. Although, I have a grammar question, which I don't think you guys will be able to answer. Maybe one of our Latin, or wait, maybe one of our listeners. If Wolsey is his patron, does that mean he's patronizing Richard Rich? Because our use of patronizing is like he's condescending, but... Is it patronizing? Like, is there a difference if you say patronizing versus patronizing? Giving patronage? Yeah, I, I'm curious. Anyway, listeners, let me know. Oh, uh, to patronize. Frequent a store, theater, restaurant, or other establishment as a customer. Give encouragement and financial support to a person, especially an artist or cause. Okay, so I guess when people say don't yeah. patronize me, it's meant to say... Okay, so... It's got two meanings. Yeah, it does. Okay, thanks, Care. Mm -hmm. All right, so from then on, he very quickly started getting involved in politics. He was placed on the Commission for Peace in Hertfordshire, which 20 bucks says it's like Hefshire or something like that, but whatever, Hertfordshire, Hert, Hertfordshire. Um, and he was named, this is a great title. This is almost as good as Groom of the Stool, Commissioner of the Sewers. I don't know what that did. What? Don't know. Like sewers. He's in charge of the sewage. Oh, he's. What if that's sewers? Oh. So like, like clothing sew. Yeah. Now I have to think. Would that be spelled differently? Commissioner. Uh, let's of see. Of the sewers. <clears throat> Commissioner. Oh, there was a movie. That's why. So I googled it, and it turns out that there was a like a movie or something. Okay. Uh, commissioners, commissions of sewers, this is according to Wikipedia again, were English public bodies established by a royal decree that investigated matters of the land drainage and flood defense. Okay. Oh, so the, yeah, so the actual sewers. Yeah, oh my okay. gosh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was his what job. A title. What? <laughs> I'm responsible of the shit drainage. Yeah, but it, I mean, think about it back then because there wouldn't have been sewer systems the same the same way we have now i think there were i mean the romans definitely had them but it, it's got to be an important job especially in some place like london or any other large city you don't want like shit just floating on the street shit rolls downhill otherwise you'd be in france oh! um damn <laughs> uh stern of strong Okay, in 1532... Sorry to all of our French listeners. Uh, désolé. In 1532, he was appointed the Attorney General for Wales and the Chief Steward of the Southern Parts of the Duchy of Lancaster. Now, here's the thing. So, 1532, he was, Henry VIII was married to Anne Boleyn at this point, but it was also the beginning of, his, of Henry VIII breaking from the realm. I mean, technically, that started happening around, like, 1529 when he was like, fuck Catherine... But Henry VIII didn't really consider breaking with Rome until the early 1530s, right? He he was just poking the Pope to get a divorce <laughs> up until then. Poking the Pope. Poking the Pope. Poking the Pope. Um, now, here's the thing. Every site said something different about Richard Rich's views on the Reformation, and his own religious beliefs. And the TLDR of it is he had no beliefs and was just a shit stain 
and wanted to stay in power. I think there's a reason he's he like survived. He's like every modern I politician. Think, I, I think he said what people wanted to he hear. He did. He really did. But also he was a shit stain because he did not care who he took down. And you'll learn why. Okay. So 1533, he was given the solicitor. He was given the post of Solicitor General, and he was knighted, so he became Sir Richie Rich. Um, now, this is where things started getting really important for him. Actually, okay, I, I will say that this I wasn't able to confirm in terms of timeline. So he was given those roles in 1533, and at the same time, was um, those roles allowed him meant he started drafting bills and the ecclesiastical appeals act. However, that was from 1532. I think what happened was somebody else wrote the ecclesiastical appeals act, but then he was like fine tuning it. But what you guys really need to know about that is that was the key legal foundation of the English reformation. So the ecclesiastical appeals act was, um, the piece that, said the king is the final legal authority in England. You cannot go to the Pope for fucking anything or else you're trees. You're a traitor. So very important thing. And Richard Rich was in, in charge of that. Um, as part of that, he was then in charge of prosecuting opponents of the Royal supremacy. And that meant prosecuting Bishop John Fisher and his old buddy, Thomas More who he previously had an alliance with. So this is his first big shitbaggery moment. Um, I do have to give you guys some background on Bishop Fisher, because I don't think we talked about it in our original run. And I am so fucking excited to do a whole episode about him because he was also really fascinating. Bishop Fisher was a Catholic bishop and then a cardinal. Um, <laughs> I forgot about this. Fun fact, he placed a human skull on his altar during mass and on his table during meals. Uh, oh, that's metal as fuck. It's was it the very same skull? And, what? Was it the same skull every time? I hope so, because it's very concerning. He's like, and today's skull is... <laughs> I like that variety, okay? It's very Edgar Allan Poe, right? <laughs> so, he was a really important man, and he also was... Um, well loved and revered by the Tudors for a while. <laughs> and his fine um, skull collection. He he conducted the funerals of Henry the Seventh and Margaret Beaufort. TBD on whether he had their skulls on his altar during mass. <laughs> they make grain pe- pen holders. <laughs> so um, Bishop Fisher also uh, taught Henry the Eighth. Now I don't know if you guys remember this, but when Henry's brother Arthur was alive and Arthur was going to be the king, Henry was basically training to go into the church. So it makes sense that a, a priest, he was a priest at that time, would teach him. But um, either way, Fisher taught Henry VIII. Um, he was a vocal opponent of Lutheranism. And things started to go sour for his relationship with Henry when Henry wanted to divorce Catherine. Fisher staunchly defended her. He he would not hear a word against her. He refused to believe that there was any legal Catholic reason for Henry to divorce her. He actually said he'd be willing to die on behalf of the indis oh god indissolubility of the marriage, meaning like I'm so sure of this, I would die for it, which he did. Um, spoilers. <laughs> So Henry VIII was pissed at him and Fisher was very much Matt Berry. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, now, the difficulty was that Fisher also had political power because he was a member of parliament. So he had religious power as a bishop and political power as a member of parliament. He was very important to the point where there were attempted assassinations. One was a poisoning and the only reason he wasn't poisoned, even though everybody else in his household was, is because he was fasting the day that everybody was poisoned. Well, it that's was convenient. Just, it was. Um, now, this is something I did not know. There was an attempted assassination via cannonball. Subtle. Right. Huh. <laughs> right. Uh, sir, what do you have in your trousers there? <laughs> um, it's. And I only saw this once, so when I do a Fisher episode, I will go into this more. But apparently, 
it's believed that it was the Bolins who were trying to um, assassinate him. So they had a cannonball shot into his house from across the river. Um, okay, so in 15... 15- <laughs> <laughs> very subtle. Yeah, I would say, subtle. like, it's like the idea someone had to sort of, like, take the time to, like, haul this cannon somewhere to, like, and aim it and everything and hope it works. Yeah. It's like, something small like poison didn't work. Let's try something bigger. <laughs> too big? You think this is too big? You think You think we're just showing off here? No? Okay. Fire the cannonball. I just, like, like, how do you subtly roll a cannon? <laughs> Down the street. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> ignore me. <laughs> Problem is, is way is way. I imagine there. assassins yeah. coming in the middle of the night with like a cannon, just like <laughs> right next to the guy's. You just house. hear like this <laughs> god awful grinding because these are like not very well paved roads, and the cannons are wheeled on giant wooden don't, wheels. Don't worry, it's just a Tchaikovsky rehearsal <laughs> happening here. <laughs> I imagine it's like when Bam Margera would wake up his parents. <laughs> Viva. Didn't he do that once? He likes it off like fireworks yep. or like some loud ass thing in the bedroom. Oh, man. Viva la Bam. Um, okay, so in 1534, the act of succession was um, a legal act that Henry forced through that said, um, one, all of the children... And Boleyn and I have are the successors. That was a big thing in it. But the second element of it was I, Henry VIII, am the final power in England. Fuck the Pope. So everybody in England had to swear to this oath, saying, Yes, of course. Most people swore it because they didn't want to die. But Bishop Fisher was like, Nah, I'm on my horse. His name is Moral. I'm not swearing your oath. I fucking survived cans. I can handle this. <laughs> he did not. Spoiler. Mm-hmm. Um, Moore was the same. Moore, uh, uh, Thomas Moore also refused to swear the act of succession. So he was imprisoned. Now, here's where. Could they like flee to Rome or something? No. Could they not? Yes. Although Moore was like 80 something. So it would have been hard for him to flee. It more would have been like a cracking crawl. Um, more you'll never take me alive more had a wife and kids and then richard i mean if we learned anything from tudor history it's that henry the eighth will go after your family if you'll remember there was a man named richard pole who was a bishop Mm -hmm. he was turned into a cardinal by the pope and he was pissing off henry from afar he was in other countries and so henry in revenge decapitated his mother that was the very depressing Countess of Salisbury episode. So it wouldn't have really helped if he fled. Moore had a family as well that he couldn't just abandon. Okay, so this is where our good pal Richie comes in. So both Moore and Bishop Fisher are imprisoned. Richard is um, Richard goes to the tower to interview Fisher, because remember, he's the lead prosecutor. And he promises that besides the king, the conversation they have will remain between the two of them. He, he failed to read him his Miranda rights. And it didn't. It didn't. Because that conversation, that exact conversation was then used as evidence against Fisher. He was found guilty. He was beheaded. He did the exact same thing to Thomas More. Remember the guy he had an alliance with? Um, and I wrote this down because I love More. So Richard said, hey, uh, more hypothetically, wink, um, the king, like, let's be real. The king can enact any law and people have to obey it, right? So if Parliament passed an act saying, oh, I, Richard, Richard Rich, am now the king, you would obey that, right? And Pope goes, well, yeah, that's fine. But if Parliament passed an act saying God wasn't God... How could anybody follow that act? And so um, Moore said, then Parliament can also cannot also then declare the king is head of the church. Right? Yeah. Um, so that conversation was then used as evidence against Moore because it was essentially him denying the supremacy. Now, I will say up until that point, Moore had never denied his supremacy. He simply said, I will not swear it. He never said, 
I refuse to acknowledge him as, as the head of my church ever. He just said, I won't swear it. So nobody could actually legally go after him without that evidence. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people believe that that conversation never fucking happened. And the chief argument is if Moore went so long without saying something stupid, why would he then say something stupid? And then, um, because they had an alliance. That, uh, no. No. Uh, they had the secret handshake. Come on. We, <laughs> we peaky swore. Um, so at Moore's trial, when Moore found out that his conversation with Richard was not so private, he said to Richard, basically, I'm paraphrasing, I'm more sorry for your shittiness than my own danger because nobody thought you'd be such a twat. <laughs> like, he... <laughs> I mean, he said it in the 1500s way of saying it, but that's the paraphrasing of it. Like, yeah, it sucks for me, but you're a dick. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, lots of suspicion that it was just straight up outright perjury by Richard. So both Fisher and Moore were condemned to, de- uh, to death. And Richard, meanwhile, became the overseer of liveries of lands and a professional business writer of common pleas. It's-, it's a step up from commission of the sewers so he was once again promoted for being a cunt and then in 1535 he married this was his marriage um he was about 40 i was gonna say so he's not had any marriages before then i don't think so there was none that i saw um so far it is impressive for like how he's worked his way up to this point it it is told me like he was a butler (laughs) It is. Um, I I can't help but think that his wife must have been like 19 because she had so many kids. She had three sons and nine or ten daughters. Holy Mm -hmm. shit. Damn, she's a rabbit. Yeah. Um, Richard Rich also had one illegitimate son. I've actually got shocked by that low number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if she had to carry 12 pregnancies, 13 pregnancies, and you get pregnant every, let's just, let's just assume she's super fertile every 12 months. Some Irish twins. Yeah. In April, 1536, um, he got even more promotions. And remember April, 1536 was, a month before the downfall of Anne Boleyn. Um, it wasn't really related to that, but it's just how I place everything in terms of <laughs> Tudor times. <laughs> um, he became the chancellor of the new court of augmentations. And again, I didn't look that up. I don't give a shit. But essentially, it meant he oversaw the dissolution of the monasteries. He was very pleased to take this role. So he benefited from it because he would get money from the sales of these monastic lands. So this is where the the monks lived, right? So Henry VIII Cromwell was like, oh, they're the monks are evil, the nuns are evil, they're they're doing really wicked things. So we you should not close. see those horror movies from Yes. Uh we should close, we should shut down their monasteries and their nunneries and sell the land. It's for the good of the people. And also we then make a lot of money. So Richard got a lot of money from that. But um, so this is where it's it's confusing because this makes it seem like he's all for Reformation, right? He's like, fuck yeah, this is great work we're doing. Um, He also became a speaker for the House of Commons, so even more political power. So he was doing pretty well for himself. Um. And then Cromwell was arrested in 1540. Do you guys remember that? Right. I mean, I remember Cromwell. Go on. So fucking Cromwell was arrested in 1540. Richard, who had been his best buddy during the beginning of this Reformation, provided key testimony against him. I thought we had an alliance. (laughs) He can't have an alliance with anybody, apparently. Um, he was then named a privy counselor, so that meant he was on the king's council. And um, 
Things were going fine. He was a year later accused of corruption, but those charges were cleared. And he did lose his job as a chancellor, but he then became the treasury for a French war. That didn't last long, but it was mostly because he was like, I don't like this. Okay, he betrayed Moore. Mm -hmm. He betrayed Cromwell. Two completely different op... uh, 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 like sides Religious, of the, yeah, like yes, the... spectrum, opposite sides of the spectrum. So then, when Catherine Howard was accused of all of her suddiness before marrying Henry VIII, um, Richard and another dude not named John Gage, they were in charge of questioning and torturing Thomas Culpepper, Francis Derham, and Henry Mannix. And just a quick reminder for you two: Catherine Howard was, um living with her step-grandmother as a child. And at that time, she had two sexual relationships. It doesn't mean she had sex, but sexual relationships. With, one with her music teacher, Henry Mannix, and one with um, a man named Francis Derham. He was the, secretary's, the, the secretary for the Duchess. And what does it mean to have a sexual relationship if you don't have sex? Just like a boy yeah, like, or we don't like... we don't really know. They, we don't, it, it could have been handsy. It could have been. I don't know. The high school level of. Yeah. Like, yeah. So sexual. like they were doing sexual stuff. <laughs> I touched her boob. Right. But we don't know if they had sex. Um, Probably she had sex with Francis Darum. We I, I think that's a fairly positive thing. Um, she did not with Henry Mannix, but they did have sexual relations of some kind with that woman. Um, so then when she was married to Henry VIII, she kept secretly meeting Thomas Culpepper. Again, they both completely denied having sex, but she was still involved in, she was emotionally cheating on Henry. And that was just too much. So, um... Richard and uh, John Gage, they were in charge of torturing those those three. Um, and they were actually given permission. They're like, look, if you execute them while you're torturing them because they won't give you answers, that's fine. No biggie. Um, all the men confessed. <laughs> and then they were all beheaded. So um, he took part in that. Then in 1546, so... Uh, Henry VIII is still alive. Mm-hmm. It's Henry VIII is still alive. It's nearing the end of his reign. Um, now, at this point, so Henry has broken with the Catholic Church. The Reformation had started, and it's it was closer to Protestantism than Catholicism in the 1530s. But Henry VIII is... is uh, very much a Catholic. Like, he likes everything to do with Catholicism except the Pope. So, in 1546, now that Cromwell was around, or was gone, and could no longer push for Protestant ideals, um, it went back to being more conservative. So, Richard was put in charge of prosecuting heretics, which it, it could be anybody. It could be Protestants. It could be Lutherans. It could He's be got Catholics. got a great track record so far. Right. He was actually in charge of um, torturing Anna Skew. She was a Protestant. A we did it. Yeah, we had a whole episode about her. Busy and, skewing each other. That was literally the title. Um, so she was a, a martyr, essentially. She was a Protestant. And she was close with Catherine Parr. So Bishop Gardner was just like the super conservative guy. And he wanted Anaskew to um, expose Catherine Parr as a Protestant. So that's why they were tortured. So the bishop said to the constable of the tower, hey, you should totally torture her. And the the constable was like, um, no, very much illegal to torture a woman. And Richard was like, well, I'll do it. So he stepped in and took over torturing her and did not say anything about Catherine Parr. She did die though. Um, so maybe Richard was conservative. Maybe he was president. Maybe he just didn't have any beliefs and just followed what would keep him alive. Maybe he just liked fucking I with people. Was that. What would Richard Rich do? So it really, I think it really just became all about protecting himself. Okay. 
So he became pretty tight with the um, Seymour brothers. They were Jane's brothers, and they were uncles to Prince Edward. So you remember? Vaguely. Oh, right. Okay, so Jane Seymour gave Henry the son he always wanted. Mm -hmm. She died. But the bro her brothers, Edward and Thomas, became powerful because they were brothers of the woman that finally gave Henry his a heir. Son. Right. So they were still Protestant ish, like as Protestant as you could be without coming out and being like, I'm Protestant. Mm -hmm. And so Richard was really close with them. He collaborated with them to bring down the Duke of Norfolk and his son, the Earl of Surrey. Uh, I don't remember if we've talked about that. We can do a whole episode if we, we can do a whole episode if we want. Um, but the Duke of Norfolk and his son, they were, they were Catholics. So again, it's, it doesn't really matter what their religion is. He just doesn't give a shit. Yeah. And then Henry VIII died. Richard, why did I write that? I just wrote Rich Continued. He became the Baron. <laughs> I mean, you're not he wrong. Continue on. He did. He continued. That's the episode title, Rich Continued. Um, he then became the bar a Baron because he became an executor of Henry VIII's will. Um, he was given land in Essex. By the way, is a Baron something that's like you become a baron if you're a lawyer is it like esquire like i think you're only an esquire if you're a lawyer right i can i don't I can know. Never remember like how that all works with like because i noble i don't titles. because they said he became a baron as an executor of henry VIII's will so that made it seem like it was tied to that not if anybody has knowledge on this area, please let me know. Yeah, because it's not like it's not a noble title. It's more of a like governmental power. I, like title. I guess. Okay. I'm used to hearing barons and like and like film villain roles for some reason. Um. Okay. So Henry VIII died, and Edward became the king. Now he was still a child, so there was a regency, and that meant the. Seymour's Edward Seymour was the regent. So essentially he had all the kingly power. Now, during that reign, Edward, Edward was uber Protestant and he was overseen by his uncles who were also Protestant. So all of the conservatives were prosecuted. So, um, Bishop Gardiner, the one who had prosecuted and who'd gone after Anna Skew and was trying to get Catherine Parr beheaded. He was gone after, and Richard took part in that. So the man, he helped Richard Gardner prosecute Anna Skew, and then he turned and went after Bishop Gardner. So he was imprisoned. He wasn't um, executed. Bishop Gardner was eventually released. And this is all like right, this is after Jane Seymour's passed away too, around this time? After Who? Jane Seymour's passed. Yeah, right? Jane Seymour died in 1537. Okay, so this is like... We're like 10 years later. Man, he's a busy guy. Yeah. Richard Rich, what a dick. <laughs> um, Who else but dick? So, the king was under a regency. Richard Rich was BFFs with the Seymours until he wasn't. And he decided <laughs> to say, fuck you guys. I will say... If you guys remember, they fucked up bad. <laughs> they tried kidnapping. They kept trying to overthrow the regencies. Like, it's really hard to be like, I'm still on your side, but you got to stop doing that. So, <laughs> Stop kidnapping people. <laughs> he did. So then the Duke of Northumberland was like, hey, Richard, we got to get rid of the Seymours. And he's like, yes, sir. And helped him do that. Oh, my God. Then he was accused of trying to overthrow Northumberland with Seymour. So Seymour was executed and somehow Richard was not imprisoned for that. I don't really know how. It, it is like the wackiest. I just, I'm just so shocked how long this man has lived now. And he's in like the thick of all of the fucking drama. No kidding. But he like, 
He's slippery dick. They can't get. They can't really pin him is down. Slippery dick. <laughs> okay. So then, Edward got sick. The little the little boy king. He got sick, and he knew he was not going to live long. And so he started planning his will. This is where he said, "I want to name my cousin Jane as queen because she's Protestant." So Mary and Elizabeth are bastards. Jane is going to be the queen. And Richard was like, love this idea. Like, I love that for our kingdom. Let's do it. And then Edward died. And he was like, JK, LOL, Mary forever. White out, white out, white out. He then declared his allegiance to Mary. Okay. All the betrayals. So Mary became queen. Remember, she's super Catholic. And her bestie was Bishop Gardiner, the man he'd betrayed and gotten imprisoned. Mary released him, and apparently Gardiner was like, bygones be bygones, eh, old chap? Mary became queen, and she went on progress, which I don't know if you guys remember it. A progress is like the tour of the kingdom. Yeah. Okay. She stayed with Richard and his wife in August. She was like, hey, buddy, thanks so much for voting for Mary. Um, she did tell him, um, look, I know you gained a lot of land from the dissolution of the monasteries. I'm going to need that back. So she made him return the land and he became so trusted that he joined Mary's privy council. Right. So he then helped restore Catholicism in Essex, (laughs) even though he was the one. My God. I know. He's like a, he's a flip flopper. He became an active persecutor of Protestants, and he took part in burning a man named Thomas Watts because that man, Thomas, refused to attend mass. And he's like, light it up. So then Elizabeth, so then Mary died and Elizabeth became queen. So you're like, okay, Mary was Catholic. Elizabeth was Protestant. Finally, somebody's going to call him on his shit. Nope. He didn't become part of her <laughs> privy council, but he was still a very influential person. He would give her advice on, like, who to marry, which she clearly didn't listen to, but she accepted his advice. So the man still retained decent enough influence. Now, this is around 1558. Um, Unfortunately, his wife dies. So I would like to point out that they married in 15, let's see, 1535 and 1558 she died. So... They weren't even married for 25 years. Did I do that math right? I think so. 35, 45, 55, so that's 20. They were married for 23 years, and she had 13 children. So, so yeah, yeah, you're right. It's like by every, like, year and a half. Yep. On average. Yep. Um, Jeez. He then died in 1567. Not, Not with a beheading. He just got sick. And peacefully passed away. How, how long had Elizabeth been in right at that point? 1558. So he survived a little bit of Henry the Seventh, all of Henry the Eighth, all of Edward, all of Mary, a good chunk of Elizabeth. I, how? Because slippery I, dick. Almost every time we've talked about people on this podcast. Most of the time, they're, they're, they never die because of something awful, or they're sent away. Well, the influential ones, the ones who were well, heavily involved in like all of the political machinations of the kingdom. This guy knew who who was signing his checks. Like he wasn't about to like like stand up for what he believed, and he was like, "Oh no, absolutely, we're gonna prosecute the shit out of this guy." Or like, "Oh yeah, this guy's dead." He must have known who was really signing the checks because biggest yes man ever. Oh. The big, the, the, the first oh, yeah. yes man. The thing is, he must have known who was really in power, not just signing his checks, because Cromwell was in power. Like, yes, Henry was king, but Cromwell was the one pushing for the Reformation, and Henry was like, yeah, that's a great idea, woo! And Richard Rich leaned into that, and then Cromwell was gone, and it, like, it was just this constant back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Like, it's mind. Like, do you think at one point he just forgot? And was like, I don't even fucking know who's king anymore. <laughs> okay. uh, so that was Sir Richard Rich. First I Baron Rich. Sh- shocked we'd never discussed this person before. 
And he was so involved in so yeah. many things we've talked about, like yeah, intimately like involved. He said, like his name just kind of comes up all over the place in so many situations with so many. He the fact that he's he has direct contact with so many pe- major people that we've talked about this, like Seth Cromwell and more, and then being there, like Edward was consulting with him on his wit, like yep. all this guy who came from being a butler. It's like a. It... <sighs> And considering guys, he's the guy that put a lot of these guys away Forrest or just Gump. like directly caused yeah. their death. He's well, Forrest Gump of the Tudors. He's like the Holy dark Forrest shit. Gump. <laughs> <laughs> dark Forrest Gump. I think we just found the, the episode title. Life is like a sewage drain. You never know what kind of shit's going to come out of it. <laughs> I just imagine any time, any time you 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 described him talking to somebody else, I just imagine him like putting slowly putting his hands behind his back and crossing his fingers. <laughs> yes, we have an alliance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this man was baffling. It was I I cannot believe we did not talk about him more in the original run. He's so fucking insane I can't believe they, they based a whole cartoon show off this guy I know <laughs> you know what was really shocking was when his parents plane was blown up and oh. the only way he could connect to them was through this thing called the dad link that his dad created his dad was actually a very smart man he's very tall too but it's it's amazing his parents plane was blown up and somehow they survived but meanwhile, as a young lad, he takes over his dad's company and he's running it fairly successfully. But then there's this, like evil man who's lurking in the background. And he keeps trying to take power because he wants all the money that his parents left behind. And eventually you find out that that man was in charge of the, he's the reason the parents plane blew up. And he's actually trying to kill Richie. And eventually Richie ends up finding his parents are alive and they all reunite. But the bad man is still there and he's chasing after them. And so they end up escaping to a mountain that's shaped in, in, or that's carved in the shape of their own heads. And somehow they escape him, even though there's a laser being pointed at them. And there's another henchman who I completely forgot about until this point, trying to blast them with the laser. Crazy. It's all about this guy from Tudor's time. <laughs> yes. Wait, that was the plot of Richie Rich. Have you? No. <sighs> I always confuse. I always confuse that movie with Blank Check. Vastly different. It's Blank Check, totally different. <laughs> They're very different. One of them has has statutory. There's a rape part in it. where the butler is put in prison, and uh, they have. Oh my god, they have a scientist named Cadbury, like the egg, and he invents a bunch of crazy fucking shit. And the only two I remember that he invented was a toothpaste that can eat through. Led. Was Richie Rich the movie where he had a Burger King inside his house? McDonald's. It was a McDonald's, you trash. It was a McDonald's? I, sorry, maybe it was just as a kid, I was like, man, I wish I had a Burger King in my house. And uh, that's how yes, I confused he did. it. He uh, didn't know how to make friends because he was all rich and awkward. And he eventually meets all these normal kids. And the butler's name is Herbert. Not Herb. He's not a vegetable. Well, thanks for... Telling us about Richie Rich <laughs> and so Richie welcome. Rich. Happy to do it. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. How's it feel? Yeah, how's it feel to be back? I forgot how dry my throat gets talking this long, but not, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm having not, fun. I used to this. I'm having fun. I I love it. Glad to be back. How's it feel to listen to me talk about something that you generally don't care about? Oh, uh, it feels good. It feels good. I'm. I feel like I'm learning <laughs> stuff. <laughs> learning is fun it's much easier to record episodes now now we live in a world where it's remote recording is a norm yes we were doing that for years before it all became yep like, we were prepped for covid man we did it before yeah. it was cool uh i think that's it Jeez. all right well you cool. know did you have anything else for us today or? Uh, all right i'm rewatching the tutors shocker how far are you into it right now? Season four. Okay. Um, There's only five seasons, right? No, four. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the last season. Um, I am rereading a series that I read a long time ago, and it's called The Balin King. 
there's a, it's a trilogy and it's all about what if Anne Boleyn had actually had a son. So she had Elizabeth and then. I think I say what if Anne Boleyn was a dude. <laughs> no. It's Andy um, Boleyn. What? Andy Boleyn. Ew. Um, <laughs> can you imagine going back to Tudor England and meeting somebody named Andy? Andy Boleyn was my friend. Oh, shut up. Uh, no, so the Boleyn inheritance is what if instead of Anne having that final miscarriage, she had ended up delivering a son and he became king. It's But it would be her brother's son. That's actually a pivotal plot point is there's <gasps> still, even though there is a, a son of Henry VIII on the throne and Elizabeth is still around and Mary is still around because she was mm. born first and Anne is queen, there are still Catholics who oppose them. And so I'm at a point in the book where somebody brings up a rumor that had started in 1536 that he's the son of Anne and George. Ooh. Um, it's it's like um uh, it's not super heavy. It's very enjoyable though. It see whenever I rewatch uh, the Tudors, even though I know what's gonna happen. I always still get so heartbroken when Anne Boleyn is beheaded. It's like if I watch it enough, maybe it'll change. <laughs> so this book helps kind of... Just like when Spock dies. Spoiler alert. Just like when Spock dies. Uh, so this satisfies that curiosity. So it is a trilogy. I've owned it on my Kindle for a while, but I'm betting 100% you can get it from a library um, or an audiobook. But it's fun. It's simple. It's enjoyable it scratches that history itch so it, it's you said it's a trilogy yes it's, it's called... the boleyn king the boleyn inheritance the boleyn reckoning okay no not the boleyn inheritance maybe the boleyn inheritance i don't know it starts with the boleyn king cool yeah so you're looking for a book check that one out um and also please give me book recommendations because I could definitely use them, but try and make them something available at the library. I promised myself I wouldn't buy new books this year <laughs> because I did an inventory and I own 36 books I've never read. But if it's at the library, it doesn't count. So, yeah. S- support your library, people. Honestly, the library is great. We get so much stuff from there. We get movies. We get soundtracks, CD or uh, CDs, soundtracks. Oh it's, yeah, I go there quite frequently. Just pick up at like, like weekly. Honestly, like there's so much fun stuff. I love. I find a lot of movies I can't find streaming anywhere. Yeah. Like a lot of older movies. Fuck streaming, guys. Like digital is not the way to go. Remember how we talked about our vast movie collection? It is still growing, guys. Oh, like yeah. we still buy DVDs regularly because things will be removed from Netflix. They will be removed from Hulu. You will no longer be able to allow, be able to use your parents' Disney, but we own all the movies, so it's not a problem for us. Libraries are great. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for my media corner. I haven't really been doing anything. I think I'm going to rewatch all of the Tudor Philip O'Gregory shows, uh, White, White Princess, White Queen, Spanish Princess, whatever. The, right. Oh, there's something out and coming princess. out with, um, Susan Sarandon called Mary and George. Uh, hmm. I have to check that out. I, I've only seen like a teaser trailer. Um, so there's another show. I can't remember off the top of my head. That is Tudors. Related. The white, uh, the, the oh, serpent queen, I think is another one. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. I mean, there's still a lot. Hey, and if, I mean, if you guys know of any yourself, you've been either watching lately, like it could be old. You may do if you guys got something you've been watching. Mm-hmm. Let us know. Tell us what you've been checking out. Yep. Want to see? I think it'd be fun to go, go and watch some old old movies Anna about the Thousand like Days. Be, well, there's like ton, I'm sure there's tons of them. I'm sure from old black even black and white. Films, we did an episode eras. about it. But I thought I should go and, go and actually watch them. We, yeah. we know of them. Oh. But I don't think we ever actually watched any of them. I've watched a lot of them, but yes, I would love to watch them with you guys. That'd be fun. Yeah, because I don't think I've ever checked them out before. I I, I remember. God, this has been years ago. I remember watching the one that has uh, Robert Shaw in it. Mm-hmm. Like, and I barely remember what the hell even mm-hmm. happened at it because I didn't know yep. who the hell this character, who these people were in history. Yeah. Uh, recommendations, send them our way. Um, I think that's it for today's episode, though, right, guys? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Find us I on so. Facebook, 
And it's... we're going to get back on Twitter. And like I said, we got a TikTok. So uh, that'll just cr- be I'll, me being silly. I'll probably create an Instagram account just as another place to oh, post things. Yeah, Nothing. we want to be able to share the pictures that we talk about in our episodes. Yep. And another place to like, post stuff. No way for people to get in contact with us and follow us. I'm also working on having our episodes on also like places like YouTube as well. I believe since we've been back, I've gone through all the different platforms because when we were first starting, Spotify wasn't even a podcast place. So oh, yeah. it's kind of, so everything should be there. I know some of you told us like the first six episodes were missing. I believe I found out why it was because the software we go our podcast through was like limiting to only the hundred most recent episodes. So that's why some of the things were missing on different platforms. Everything should be there now. If you see missing, please let me know and I'll try to get those out there. If you see something, say something. (laughs) Uh, As for probably how we're going to do this with us being back, it's probably right now at the beginning be monthly. So unfortunately we won't be back weekly. At most we might become like every other week. At most, like maybe twice a month. But maybe. that's going to give us more time to post stuff on our other platforms too. So we won't be silent elsewise. We we still, honestly, guys, I just want to talk to you about tutors all the time. Jeffrey yes. and Garrett, yes, but also you guys. We're still kind of getting ourselves back in this groove. It's been a while. Like we had been a while since we actually had to record stuff uh-huh. and do this and editing and everything. A lot of things got to get back in that groove again. But trust us, we're so happy doing this right now. Like this, this is really for all three of us. It's our hobbies. We don't, we don't make money off of this. No one's paying us to do this. We're just doing this now out so of our fuck own. Fuck all you haters. Time. Yeah, we're doing this out of our own free time, and we are literally paying to have this podcast out. So, but so happy to be back, guys. Really. Mm-hmm. Feels good. But so, until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Divorce beheaded. Divorce beheaded. Divorce beheaded. Survived. Goodbye. Goodbye. And welcome back. Mwah.